going to talk about. Okay. What's up guys, this is Jimmy and I'm here with Kayla who is the River Queen Guide Service. Uh, she's here to talk to us today about kind of rock fishing in the upper parts of the bay, like South Miami, <laughs> South Miami Flats, some of those rivers up there. Um, brought some baits and some stuff to talk about, so I'm kind of going to let her take it away. I'm going to ask questions on behalf of you guys. If you guys have questions, go ahead and ask us, but I'm going to just try and cover everything for you guys. Hi everyone, um, I'm Kayla and I run River Queen Guide Service. Um, I mainly fish areas um, basically from literally here north um, and typically, you know, and a lot of the guys out here that have already spoke today, they are looking for uh, birds, um, they're fishing deeper waters, um, and what I do is I normally fish in much shallower waters, literally in like maybe four to five feet deep. Um, and I typically look for structure fishing um, instead of birds. You know, I'll let, I'll let everybody else go chase the birds around the bay all day long and I'll just, I'll find rocky shorelines, I'll hit piers, I'll hit bridges, um, and I'm always checking the tides. Um, that's a huge factor with the upper bay, um, which a lot of people don't really think about. Um, Tides are, tides are my best friend. So when a tide's moving, I'm out there. Um, and typically, uh, I don't use any live bait. I'm, I'm all artificial, light tackle. Um, I'm throwing usually a six foot to seven foot uh, rod. Uh, JLS is one of my favorite fishing rods to use, and I know anglers is now stocking JLS rods. Um, but any kind of paddle tail, Especially in the late spring, early summer months, uh, when the white perch start to move in, um, paddle tail, any natural paddle tail is, is also your best friend. Can you talk about the difference between cover and structure for some people who may not understand or think they're the same sure, thing? Sure. Um, when I say structure, normally what I'm looking for is you know any kind of shoals, rocky shorelines, especially. Um, that's where a lot of the bait fish are going to be hiding in, especially when the tide's moving in or out, those white perch or the shad or whatever, they're going to tuck in real close into whatever structure that's nearby to kind of cover themselves and to hide. And with the rockfish, once they know that or once they feel where the bait is, they're going to ambush into these rocks or into the piers of the columns or something of the bridges and you know they'll feed on those white perch or the shad um, and that, that's what I mean by structure and cover um, you know like I said a lot of the guys are out chasing birds all day long I try to avoid the avoid the crowd avoid the birds and I just fish rocky shorelines and I always 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 end up catching probably the same amount of fish that they do and you don't have to deal with the people <laughs> So as far as tides go, uh, incoming versus outgoing, uh, do you find there's anything you can do on a slack tide to still get bites, or do you just kind of pack it up and go somewhere else when you're on a slack tide? Um, normally, I personally have better luck on an outgoing tide. Um, usually, if your outgoings in the afternoons and evenings, um, that's when I, I like to fish the best. Um, on a slack tide, though, uh, I tend to want to throw something with a little more action to it. I'll start throwing like a more wobbly paddle tail or I'll even throw a minnow plug um, of a bigger size, like a six inch or seven inch minnow plug, something to get a little more action in the water. Um, but then when the tide really starts ripping, you can start throwing those straight tails like a PKE, uh, gravity tackle. They, um, just when the tide gets ripping, those straight tails, all you really have to do is just jig it across the bottom, and that little tail flap of the straight tails usually is enough action to get a straight bass to, to want to bite. Um, I also, so, you know, I'm fishing in shallow, shallow waters. So, like I fish uh, Susquehanna River a lot, up in the rocks, up below Conway Go Dam. Um, I also fish in areas on the inside of the Key 
bridge, not the outside, but the inside of the key bridge, uh, Bush River, and a lot of those areas, uh, there isn't really much of a tide. You're more on like a, the river flow, especially in the Susquehanna River. I'll kind of focus more on that. Um, and in there, you're focused more on the river flow and not the tides. So in that case, your, your bait fish and your white perch, shad, whatever, they're all tucked in behind these eddies of the rocks and stuff. So in that case, paddle tails is my go-to. There's nothing that resembles a little white perch better than a paddle tail. So when I'm fishing the Susquehanna River, I'm looking for big eddies behind these rocks. And I'll anchor up or spot lock with my trolling motor and I'll throw these paddle tails back in behind these eddies and I'll let it swing back behind the boat. And once it gets into that river current, those striped bass are hanging on that seam in the river current. They're not necessarily in with the slack water of the eddy, but they're hanging on the seams. And these striped bass, as soon as that bait swings out and hits that fast water, they immediately slam it. So that's what I like to focus on when I'm fishing up in the rivers. Um, and I don't think straight tails uh, baits do as well. They just don't, they don't tend to float and flutter uh, like the paddle tails do. And a big thing that I've really gotten into with striped bass fishing are glide baits. Um, I know a lot of um, bass fishermen have been into the glide bait game. And I've, thanks to my brother, I've sort of mixed his love for glide baits in with my love for straight bass. And I've been having great success with the glide baits. Um, these two are probably two of my favorites. Um, it's just a basic glide bait. Um, and it just swims back and forth like a shad in the water. Um, and when, when I put it up, in, when I put it up against a, a real shad, I just, there's something about it that can't compare. So the glide bait game is, it's huge for striped bass, especially in the rivers and shallower waters. Striped bass just can't, can't resist it. It's very visual too. It's probably one of the most fun ways in my opinion. Sure. Absolutely. Just the whole visual. You guys have never used them. What those lures do is they're designed to have a super slow S back and forth almost like a real bait fish is kind of wounded and dying. And then when you twitch those kind of baits, they'll turn around. So you can have a fish follow that bait and then you'll twitch it, it'll do a 180 and that fish kind of reacts because it's like the bait fish is getting followed. It's, it's just a super fun way to fish. Um, do you want to tell us kind of what scenarios would you choose that over something that's a paddle tail or a straight tail? Um, so I would definitely throw a live bait if I'm fishing like a rocky shoreline, if I don't have a tide per se, if it's a slack tide. I'll throw that glide bait. I feel like you just have more control over the bait and you have more of the options to give it more action, give it more of a real pres presentation look. Whereas if you're throwing a jig with a paddle tail or a stray tail, you know, it only kind of goes up and down. Like, you know, that's kind of the most action you can give it. But with the glide baits, um, especially if you're using like a casting rod, um, you can really crank it down, give it like half turns, you can stop them, you can reel them really fast. I just feel like with glide baits, you have so much more opportunity to give it more of a real live fish look. Um, so on a slack tide, those would be perfect, um, especially in your shallower waters. You can throw those um, in a river situation. Sometimes the glide baits, they'll tend to want to pull on their side real fast if it gets into faster currents. But honestly, a glide bait is usually one of my go-tos over over a jig of any kind. Man, can you talk rod and reel just for people who kind of don't understand the tackle that goes in? Yeah. Them too? Uh, yeah. So I didn't bring any casting rods with me today, but I usually throw a heavy casting rod, usually a eight foot um, with a 300 series reel. Um, and I'll use braid on that. And I like a heavier braid. I'll use like 40 to 50 pound when I'm throwing live baits because I tend to get snagged sometimes. They'll get hung up on trees, on sunken logs or something. And live baits are not cheap. 
So I personally don't want to lose lose a expensive fly bait. So that's why I throw a heavier braid, just so I can really yank it off the tree or if it gets snagged on the rock, I'll try to go over to it and retrieve it. Um, but I'll throw heavy heavy rods for the for the glide baits. Um, when I'm throwing paddle tails or shrimp tails, I typically this this is my go-to rod. Um, it's the JLS the 704 series rod. Um, it gets great tip action. It allows you to really snap um, when you're jigging, and it's very light. It's one of the most comfortable rods I've ever used. Um, I like the split grips on it better it allows for casting and when you're sitting there fishing all day long you know it just it's it's easy on your hands something else I see you have some of these paddle special paddle tails do you want to talk a little bit about that kind of profile size maybe how you pick different colors throughout the day or kind of how you decide on profile and yeah. so um I brought today uh this these are called no line they needed they're a Florida based company. Um, they typically design their lures for Florida fishing for snook, tarpon, redfish. Um, and I know a ton of guys up here use them. Um, and I personally like natural colors. Even when it's cloudy, like cloudy day, sunny day, I'm, I'm always going natural. Um, now, if I'm fishing the river after a rain or something and it floods and the river gets that nasty chocolate brown gross color, that's when I'll go to brighter colors like chartreuse or pink. And I am always, always very, very religious with scents. Um, any kind of smelly jelly, the, the shad scent, uh, spike it, the chartreuse color, the garlic really give those baits just that extra flair, pizzazz, if you will, um, in muddy, any kind of muddy water conditions. Um, but the no lie bait needed, um, I've just had very, very great success with them, typically over other paddle tails. Um, they just seem to give a little more wobble, a little more live, what a foot live bait uh, effect to them. They're just great baits all around. They're durable. Um, you can't beat the hooks that they give you and, and their jig heads. They're tough as nails and guaranteed. I personally haven't lost many fish on them. Um, and the hooks are just, they're tanks. <laughs> so, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about time of year for kind of when those fish are more up in the river or when it's the best time to target them, I guess? Um, so I have more success usually in early summer months up in the rivers. Um, that's when a lot of the white perch are still up in there doing their white perch spawning, feeding. Um, so usually late spring, early summer is when I typically do best up in the rivers. And then usually summertime when it gets real low and it gets hot out, the river's not flowing as much. So those fish kind of move south and go into the deeper waters where it's cooler. Um, and that's where all the bait is hanging around. Like I said, if you just look for shoals and stuff, um, that's where the shad and the white perch are going to be hanging. And usually there's striped bass hanging around. Hanging around there. You might not mar be marking them on your depth finder or whatever, but take a jig and jig around those shoals. I can guarantee there's probably some striped bass on the bottom somewhere. Um, but then in the fall, river conditions pick back up. We get our our hurricanes and our tropical storms, which flood the river back up. And with the dams and stuff on the rivers, it's holding back all those shad that have spawned. So when the dam opens up in their floodgates or whatever, all those shad flush down in the river. And it's just, in the fall time, it could be a feeding frenzy. I mean, you'll be sitting there and you'll see thousands of shad dropping through the river and it's just an explosion of top water with these striped bass eating on those shad that have been held up behind the dam all summer long. Um, so that's when I'll start throwing top water glide baits or, you know, spooks and stuff like that up in the rivers. I see you have two different types of jig heads. I'm kind of just curious myself. Is there any scenario when you go to the ball head over something more like a traditional kind of swimming style? Um, not really, honestly. I, being a guide, I started my own jig heads 
so that's why I had the ball one. Um, but I don't really foresee a difference in the style of jig heads. Um, maybe, you know, in the lower bay, maybe there might be a difference um, for a ball um, for jigging purposes. But like I said, I don't really focus much on deep water jigging. Um, I'm more of a fast, swift current. You know, if the tide's ripping, I'm, you know, I'm casting out up in front of the pilings a couple feet, letting it sink down and letting that paddle tail or the straight tail do all the action. You know, give it a couple, you know, a couple twitches of your rod tip and give it a little flare. And I, I don't really have a preference. And then I guess as far as like line, I, you can whenever the rod and then obviously you have parade on there, so you probably have like 30 pounds. Yeah, I, so in the summer, summer, fall, um, yeah, I just use a 30 pound braid. Um, I prefer a high seas uh, brand braid. Um, and I know color wise, some people are like, oh, the yellow, they can see the, the color of the, the line. And I don't, um, I don't believe in that just because I'm throwing a leader, oh, like I'll tie a leader on onto my braid and I use a 40 pound leader, um, mono, fluoro, either one's fine. Um, and the reason why I throw a leader is because where I'm fishing, you know, like I said, it's very structure based. So if you hook into a striped bass or something and you're just throwing straight braid and that striped bass gets down into the rocks or up against the, the piling or the log or something and it'll wrap around in there. If that braid touches that rock or that piling, it's like breaking hair. I mean, it'll, it'll immediately snap you off. So I throw a um, 30 pound braid with a 40 pound leader. Uh, that leader gives it a little bit of leeway and a little bit of protection, I guess, when there's striped bass do get down into the rocks so up against the pilings because it's, it's always a guarantee to happen. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, so I have an 18-foot uh, aluminum jet boat. Um, it's a G3 with a tunnel hull. Um, it allows me to run in inches of water, um, and I can get into some areas where most guys won't go. Uh, I was saying earlier, my, one of my favorite things to do is sit sit in the river, and I'll watch guys try to, you know, come up in their fiberglass boats or their aluminum boats with their props, and I just sit there and I'm like, oh goodness, this, this might not end well. But um, yeah, my I just run an 18-foot aluminum jet. And it gets me into some skinny water where there's some big fish hiding. Any other questions? <laughs> um, so, oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, so I'm in Baltimore, but I fish mainly the Upper Bay. Um, just from here north, uh, I fish the Tapsco, Bush River, Gunpowder, Susquehanna, Susquehanna Flats, Northeast. Kind of a anywhere, anywhere the fish are, that's where I'm going to be. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was kind of born into it. My dad actually took me fishing. Um, gosh, I don't even know how little I was, but there's pictures of me. I don't remember it, but he took me fishing up actually Deer Creek when the shad were coming in. And I remember standing there with him making mud pies while he was out shad fishing. And ever since then, I just have always, it's been in my blood and it's something I enjoy doing. And I, one of my passions is getting other females and other women anglers into it. So, you know, that's kind of how I just, I just fell in love with being outside and enjoying nature and learning and teaching myself things. And yeah. Thank you guys for having me, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for uh, stopping by, thank you guys for watching online. Uh, go in, we got tons of stuff on sale, tons of stuff to check out. Thank you.